My name is John Bandler and I'm going to talk to you about the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights. The Constitution starts off as follows. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. And there's an image from the Constitution, the document. The Constitution became effective in 1789. It is the supreme law of the United States. It's the foundation of all United States law. So if we want to understand law, any type of law, we should first think about the Constitution. It starts with we the people. This is a constitution and government by the people, for the people. It provides for separation of powers and checks and balances. We did not want a monarchy. We did not want a king or queen with absolute power who could pass on the, the reins of government to their offspring. Article 1 establishes the legislative branch. They make the laws. It provides for a bicameral Congress. Bicameral means two houses. One house is the House of Representatives and the other house is the Senate. And Article 1 establishes the powers of the legislative branch. Article 2 establishes the executive branch. We have a president. It sets forth the president's powers. Article 3 establishes the judiciary, the United States Supreme Court, and other federal courts. The United States Supreme Court can interpret the Constitution and has done so many times over the years. The United States Supreme Court is the highest court in the country. There are other articles as well. I won't cover them in this short article. One thing to consider is that we have a limited federal government with powers only as specifically given to the federal government and other powers are reserved to states and individuals. I put limited in quotes because our federal government is really very powerful but just remember the federal government only has the power given to it by the Constitution. There are some things, some areas where the federal government is not supposed to tread. Those powers reserved to states and individuals. It is the oldest written national constitution still used in the galaxy. Our system of government has been going on peaceably under this constitution with peaceful transfer of power, more or less, for hundreds of years. If we understand the constitution and follow it and elect the right officials, we can keep it going that way. The Constitution can be amended, and it has been amended many times. The Bill of Rights, that's Amendments 1 through 10, and there are other amendments after that. It is hard to amend the Constitution, but it can be done. Another thing you should consider is that some of the words have been exactly the same for hundreds of years, but the courts have interpreted them differently. So there has been an evolution in the interpretation of the Constitution over the years, including with Amendments 1 through 1 and 4, which we'll discuss. So as I mentioned, the Constitution can be amended in the Bill of Rights. That's Amendments 1 through 10. The First Amendment is about freedom of speech, religion, assembly, and press. I'll talk about that more in a second. The Fourth Amendment is about freedom from unreasonable search and seizure. I'll talk about that a little more, too. The Fifth Amendment provides for a right to grand jury, double jeopardy protections, due process, the right to remain silent that we now know as the Miranda warnings. The Sixth Amendment provides for a fair, speedy public trial by an impartial jury, guarantees a criminal defendant a right to an attorney. The Thirteenth Amendment, that abolished slavery. The 14th Amendment guaranteed U.S. citizenship to former slaves and said that states cannot violate a citizen's rights, must provide due process and equal protection. 15th Amendment guaranteed voting rights for former slaves. The 19th Amendment guaranteed voting rights for women. As you can tell, I've skipped many amendments. 
because uh, we only have so much time here. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Some things to think about. The First Amendment is a protection only against government's interference with speech. Okay, it doesn't protect against private consequences. Now, from this First Amendment, there's an enormous body of case law over the years. The Supreme Court and other courts have interpreted what it means and what protections it provides. It does not mean that anything can be said without any consequences in life at all. Uh, for example, if you tell your supervisor something nasty, uh, your boss, your employer can fire you. Uh, friends could stop being your friends. It doesn't guarantee you will not suffer life consequences for what you say. Uh, any speech could have private consequences. The Fourth Amendment is just about consequences from government. Now, some speech may be absolutely protected from any government consequence. We have rights to criticize our elected officials, to criticize government. We have rights to express our opinion. And no one can arrest us for this, criminally prosecute us, and we can't be brought into a civil court uh, for this speech that is absolutely protected. Nobody can sue us for that, for an opinion, generally. Now, some speech may be properly subject to a civil lawsuit. So think defamation, slander, harassment. It might not be the subject of a criminal prosecution, but someone could sue for it, bring us to court, and get damages, meaning collect money. Some speech may be properly subject to a criminal prosecution. So there are some things that might be said where the government could arrest and properly prosecute. One example is you're not allowed to shout fire in a crowded theater, uh, knowing that that might cause a panic and injury. A robber cannot say, give me your money or your life. Threats of physical harm are not allowed. Those all could be incitement to riot. Those all could be the proper subject of a criminal prosecution. Now the Fourth Amendment, which reads the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. This Fourth Amendment is a great example of how the law has evolved even as the text of the Constitution has remained the same. This Fourth Amendment used to be toothless. Then the Supreme Court has given it teeth, interpreted it, given more and more protections. Remember, this is a protection against unreasonable searches and seizures by the government, not about private parties. There's an enormous body of case law that has evolved. The Fourth Amendment establishes a search warrant requirement. I put that in quotes because there are many exceptions to the search warrant requirement. The Fourth Amendment also gives us the exclusionary rule. That is an example of the Supreme Court giving teeth to the Fourth Amendment where the Supreme Court finally said that when law enforcement violates the Fourth Amendment, the trial court can exclude the evidence from trial or suppress it so that the jury never sees it. In conclusion, the Constitution and Bill of Rights are our country's highest law. The Constitution establishes our government and how it operates. It establishes the three branches, checks and balances, how officials are elected. The First and Fourth Amendment are important. Understanding them helps us understand important issues of the day. Our military, police, elected officials, and many government workers swear an oath to uphold, protect, and defend our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
meaning protecting our laws, system of government, and freedoms, unlike some countries where the oath is to support an individual. Thank you very much. This is a very brief summary. I can't cover it all. That could be the subject of entire law courses and books. For additional information, you can see my website, the National Archives, the Cornell Legal Information Institute, and Wikipedia. Of course, being careful uh, to uh, assess facts properly. Thank you very much.